BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. When was the last time you took a look at the asset allocation of your investments? With the recent increases in the stock market, your investments may have behaved differently, with some gaining or losing more than others. This can throw your asset allocation out of balance. If you haven't rebalanced recently, take a closer look to make sure your allocations meet your objectives. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmers Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad. A backup singer. Ooh, singer. When you have the Farmers Signal app with Crash Assist. Crash Assist. If you have an auto accident. We can send help if you want it. Wow. That sounds like a whole lot of something. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available select Farmers branded policies subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Oh, this is going to put a smile on your face. Uh, You can check out the BJ Miggs page of KISW.com because there's a great commercial from a plumbing custom a co- company in Austin, Texas. They're called Radiant Plumbing. And uh, this is fantastic because they decide they're going to do a Terminator spoof where the bad robot in the movie is the toilet. There's a robot toilet. <laughs> He's the Terminator. Yeah. And uh, Arnold, is a, there's a bunch of characters who are basically trying to fight the bad robot toilet. And they're all doing these really horrible Arnold impressions. We must destroy the mother toilet. We will not stand for a toilet takeover. We've got bowel movement. Turn on all frequencies. Alpha team, status support. I can see the mother toilet now. Go! Now! The toilets are taking over the squad commander. He's been covered in mud. <laughs> That's not mud. It must be dominated. Come with me if you want to flash. <laughs> Punch me! Got this commercial is ridiculous. It's got to be seen. For all your plumbing, AC, and drain needs, just call Radiant. Come on, what are you doing? Pick up the phone now. <laughs> Do they make house calls to Puyallup? Because I want to hire these guys. Right? This, this is the is great. A, it is a great commercial. Oh my gosh! They even have a video called "The Making of the Toilet Nader." Oh, of course. So they show you like their green screen with their. Oh my gosh! These guys are geniuses. Good yeah, they are. Them. I hope they get all the business in the world. Yeah, definitely, man. You're right. That is, it is a very well done, very clever commercial. Who is your daddy and what does he do? Yeah, he he takes on the toilet nader. What does he do do? <laughs> what does hey, he do do? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Arnold. That, uh, that put a smile on my face. And again, the video's got to be seen. And I you know some of the Arnolds are bad, but some of them are really like comically oh, it's good. It's fun. Yeah. The main guy <laughs> is no better than what you guys do. Yeah, that's right. I wouldn't say me because I'm, I'm, I'm the worst. Oh. Yeah, I thought the main guy did a really good job is, is basically, you know, doing a parody of Arnold. So where is this place? Radiant Plumbing? In Austin. Wait, I want to see what they have good Yelp reviews. And that's the, do you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. That's a good question. I, I mean, I, I I still think, you know, man, it'd be fun to have over. And as long as my toilet works, right? Well, you got 4.8 out of Whoa. 5 stars on Google. That's pretty damn good for Radiant Plumbing. Yeah. Three, three stars on the old Yelp. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Three stars. What did they oh. do? Somebody didn't like their commercials that way? Yeah, I don't know what they do. It's James Cameron, he's pissed. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you guys. Can I ask you a question, though? Uh, do, do, do you really believe what you see on Yelp? Mm. I don't know. I absolutely do not believe... 90% of the reviews on anything anymore. That's why, like, yeah. sometimes when I'm, like, uh, I'm looking for something, I'll just put it up on my Facebook saying, and I hate being that guy, but that's kind of the beauty of Facebook. At least I could kind of hear reviews from people that I know or, you know, people that I, at least, like, okay, this is a local person that's not being paid to write a review. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. often I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical of, like, the really good and the really bad reviews on any of these Yelp pages. 
And even just the information about restaurants isn't always accurate. So we had all our correct information when I worked at a restaurant on our website. And people would come in. It's like, well, this was on Yelp. And it said this, this, this. I'm like, well, that's not accurate. Did you go to our website? Well, well, no. It's like, yeah, no. Our website has the correct hours and information. And you can't take Yelp for law, basically. Yeah, no, no. You look at the one-star reviews and see why they're being a Karen, because a lot of these are just like, this costs so much money. I don't know why it costs so much money. And you're like, because you hired a professional to fix it, you dummy. Yeah. Yeah, the, the things that people complain about are pretty ridiculous. And you also hear these rumors of people being like, they're they're hired, or like that these companies are like, if you want a good review, you gotta pay us. Like it's, mm-hmm. I remember trying to leave a bad, I'm not a guy that leaves bad reviews, but I was gonna leave a bad review on Amazon about a company. Because I never got the product. And then Amazon denied the, the review. What? Yeah. I like, put the review up. I'm like, never received it. I can't give you a good or a bad thing. It's, it shows on my like shipping notice that it's still in limbo for months. Yeah. So I'm like, can I get my money back? Because I don't understand what's going on. And then I get the email from Amazon saying, your, your review has been denied. I'm like, why? I think this is a very valuable review. I didn't know that reviews could be denied on Amazon. Yeah. Boy, that is that. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what the point of re- writing a review is. Now. Yeah, really, that's uh, well, you know, there's a, yeah, you know, I we, we talked about it before, especially with certain services that you use where you get to give somebody stars. Yeah, and you're basically guilted into doing it, or or the, you know, you're told if I don't get this, I could be fired, and you're like, well, what the hell? I mean, then I don't really get to give an accurate review at all, do I? Because well, if I don't get exactly five stars, I'm done. It was like, well, that's ridiculous. You know, I mean, it's like four stars should be good in certain situations. So, yeah. And is next door the way to go? I've been using next door to ask people, hey, you know, oh. can you recommend this? Can you recommend that? I mean, you got to at least you, I feel like they're real. You got to sift through some terrible, terrible people in your own neighborhood. Yeah, that's the problem is that you learn that some of your neighbors are awful human beings on on the next door app. But you're right, there's there's opportunities to also get like good reviews on like local products and local services that maybe you wouldn't be able to hear about otherwise. And the good thing is, is with next door, if you set your notifications up right, you'll get to see what the thing's about. So if if mm-hmm. I only click on the email that says about what I asked the question, yeah, of, the rest yeah. of it I can throw in the trash. Like, absolutely. Which, by the way, with like you said, Rev, pretty much with next door, yeah, yeah, throw everything in the trash. But pretty much. my pet's gone, and I hate my neighbors because they're lawn won't they won't mow their lawn rev are you looking at my phone again no i'm looking at mine oh it's Dude, just like my neighborhood it, yeah i get the email alert from next door even though i try to like disable it but it seems like it's still i finally just <laughs> accepted it but i saw one it was like missing cat and then like two hours later i get one that says found a dead cat and i'm like oh my gosh oh, like are, are these two connected do i really want to do the oh, research on yeah this? that's you know? a horrible just yeah. headline right there <laughs> missing cat found a dead cat right i don't Oy. know if it's the same cat oh yeah, you know, yeah. I don't need that in my email inbox. No. Oh, that's not good. It's like, now i got to log in. I don't even remember my password. Oh, uh, <laughs> you don't need to. <laughs> no, don't, don't no just remember. don't log in. Yeah. Well, we got a group of dancers. That's right, a group of dancers that are trying to get your booty to the pole. Steve uh, will tell you all about it. He's got the mix report for you at 617. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Talking about money with our kids often begins and ends with, how much do you need? Start by helping them learn the difference between needs, such as clothing, and wants, such as money to go to a concert. Share with them how you go about managing your money and what you are saving for and why. Don't be afraid to share the mistakes you have made along the way. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU. Farmers Policy Perks are that little extra something you can get when you're a farmer's customer. So to tell you about them, we're adding a little extra something to this ad, smooth saxophone riffs. When you have a farmer's home policy with guaranteed replacement cost, if your home gets destroyed, we'll pay to rebuild it regardless of your limits. Dig it. It's a whole lot of something. Get a quote at Farmers.com. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Optional coverage not available in every state. Only available with select farmers branded policies subject to terms and conditions underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. If you're hearing an informative newscast right now, well, then you must not be listening to BJ and Mix. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is The Mix Report. 
Well, thanks, guys. Thanks to Mercedes-Benz of Seattle for giving us the major report. And today, a very special day, BJ. Oh, really? Pucker up, because today is National Kiss Day. Oh, you mean like Kiss? Well, I mean, it could be. You want to know where the beef is? Ah. It's right here. That's right. You can listen to the music of Kiss, which I always recommend. It's a great band to listen to. Or you can play some tonsil hockey and enjoy yourself a fine kiss. Oh. But cool. you can't today because you're not home with yeah. your wife. Plus, I got my mask on, so yeah. Well, you know, you do what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Do what you got to do. All right. Mm. This is the best that they had today. Uh, what do you want from me? Well, speaking of kiss, how about let's talk about strippers. Oh, now you're talking. Now I got your attention. That's right. Well, this is probably the greatest advertisement to encourage people to vote that I've ever seen. Uh, I even saw somebody say, I feel like this is like a, a South Park ad or a South Park, Park skit. And I have to agree. It's just so ridiculous, but it's so awesome. There are a bunch of strippers in Atlanta that decided to get the word out about going out and vote. You know, a lot of people are trying to get people to vote and uh, make their voice heard and all that good stuff. So what did they do? They decided to... Uh, put together a song and also a PSA called Get Your Booty to the Pole. Pole being P-O-L-L, of course. Oh, Get Your Booty to the Pole. I get it. It's got a variety of different dancers of all shapes and all sizes telling you that you need to vote. Uh, Here, check it out. Get get, get your booty to the pole. Get your booty to the pole. Get your booty to the pole. Did we get your attention? Yes. Yes, you did. So... You're really not going to vote. You know it's more than just the president on the ballot, right? But you talking about, oh, they're going to pick who they're going to pitch out of. Get your booty to the poll. Get your booty to the poll. Get your booty to the poll. Get, get, get your vote. Vote, vote, vote. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. This is a great video. <laughs> One of the girls has vote written on her butt. Yeah, which I love this video. Uh, <laughs> this is this is a fantastic video. I got news for you right now. This is what they, they should just, if they want me to do anything, they should just get these booty ladies to ask me to. And they got little vote cards that are making it oh, rain. Yeah. And then they got the I voted sticker on their backside. It's it's America right there oh, at its finest. Oh, man. I feel like this should be part of the uh, the Idiocracy uh, sequel. I know the next one they should do. What's that? Get your booty to the doctor. How many people don't like to go to the doctor? But you know what? If these girls tell me to go to the doctor, I'm going. Or to the private eye. Get your booty to the private eye. Well, what do they call private eyes? Oh. <laughs> Get your booty to the... Yeah, I know. That's... Uh, <laughs> uh, no, okay. Wow, well, get that your was... booty to the doctor. There's no play on words with that. Well, Pole. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, yeah. All right. Get your, get your booty to the dock instead of what you were saying. There you go. Now yeah. we're cooking with butter, Ooh, BJ. Yeah. All right. There we go. Get your booty to the dock. That's right. All right. Oh, Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get yeah. your booty to the strip club for all I care. Yeah. Whenever they open up again. Uh, let's talk about New York. This is yet another example of why I'm glad I do not live in New York anymore because I remember moments like this on the subway where you would just see the weirdest things happen. Some disgusting, some hilarious. I would put this in the disgusting category because oh, New York City no. had just... Just, they just had to make a public statement telling people that it's now officially banned that you cannot defecate on subway trains. Okay, no. No, they didn't have to make that announcement because... In all fairness, they never made it uh, an actual rule. In the past, they've told people that you're not allowed to urinate in the public setting. Okay. So now they're like, hey, not only number one, but number two, you're not allowed to do that in case you were... I'm sure the people that defecate on a public train would stop doing it if they knew that it was not allowed. Yeah, of course. And here are some New Yorkers being interviewed about, uh, about well, the problem. I thought it was common sense, to be honest, to not, you know, defecate on the subway, but it does need to be said, I feel. I have seen it before multiple times, especially on the A train, if you ever took it. <laughs> not to call it A train, but it's, it's happened. <laughs> Don't go on the subway doing your business. Well, all right, that, that guy's guy best. <laughs> I, you know what? I think we have to have that guy as a permanent addition to the show. <laughs> he just, I mean, he was just like, I'm going to mess somebody up. That's why you don't go on the A train, BJ. The A train. I didn't know the A train was the famous train. for the for, uh, for the poop train. Well, that A stands for oh, hey, hey, hey. A train. Get your booty to the train. Get your booty to the train. Drop it poop. like it's hot. Poop. Poop. It's really hot. Oh, All right. right. Okay. Hey, uh, can we play this clip still? So you're telling me there's a chance. Oh, for yeah. your Seattle Mariners? Your Seattle Mariners beat the Astros 3-2. to two. I think it's like a point zero zero three percent chance that they could possibly make the playoffs. Woo! But you know what? We have a chance. There are four games left. There are three games back of second place. Ooh. That and that means... 
I don't know what that means. So you're telling me there's oh, a chance. Oh, that's what that means. That's what we're telling you. Okay. They started a series against Oakland. Yeah. Uh, the, the Astros are going to be taking on Texas. The problem also is, though, the Angels are two and a half games out of that second place spot. So we're not even... Oh. <laughs> so, the, so the Angels, the Astros, pretty much everybody has to lose. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Except for the Mariners. All, right. All baseball lose except okay. for the Mariners. All right. Well, I think it can be done. Uh, the Sounders lost last night. one nothing, one nil to the Portland Timbers. Yeah, Danny. What did you do? Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning crushed Dallas. They now have a 2-1 series lead. They beat them 5-2. to What I tell you yesterday, Steve. Yeah, you did. The Lightning play possum is what they do. But in the, in the world of sports, no bigger story than the story of Sarah Lyons. She's from Pennsylvania. She's 97 years old. Actually, 96, sorry. She's turning 97 in November. And she just bowled a 300 in bowling. Oh, huh? Wow. Yes. A 96-year-old woman bowled a 300? And she was able to do the, I don't even, I didn't know what this meant until I read the story, the no-tap 300. What does that even mean? That means she knocked down at least nine pins in each frame. What? Pretty impressive. So, nine pins in each frame. Okay, so she, and those are those sometimes aren't the easiest spares to get. I mean, you get, well, I guess if you're able to get a lot of pins down all the time, you can get the ball where you want it. She's been bowling since 27. This is her first 300 score. And as she said, that's hard. It's hard for a woman to do that, especially seniors. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. I can't believe it. I wish I could see video of this woman. 96 years old, and she's able to get that ball where she wants it. The bowling alley congratulated her on Facebook. I feel like they should name the alley after her at this point. Uh, And they called her quite the pistol, which means she's probably a pain in their ass. Oh, yeah. I'm just joking. Yeah, the pistol. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, congratulations to her. Bowled a 300. I couldn't even do that in Wii Bowl. Yeah, dude, you're right, dude. (laughs) 96. Oh, there she is. She's 96. Wow. She's, She's moving around. Yeah. She looks like she's like 73. Dude, that's insane. Good for her. That is insane. Look at her go. As far that's as weather, 64 nine. degrees, rain and thunder. Thanks to Kia of Pua for giving us the major report, and that's what's up. You know, and that keeps her healthy and keeps her young, keeps her body going, too. Look at her go, man. I'm watching this video, and yeah, yeah she's really good. Damn. Oh, they gave her a bowling pin that has 300 on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I she's love that. She's the first person at that bowling alley, Kennedy Lanes, I think, or Kenny Lanes, that's ever done it, too. How about that? That you know what? And there's a lot of dudes and a lot of dudettes that probably like are part of leagues and whatever, and go, you know what? You know I'm amazing. And then 96 year old Granny gets out there and throws a 300. Get your wow. booty to the lane. Get your booty yeah, to the lane. She's getting it done. Good for you, Bowl. lady. Bowl. Wow. Bowl. I mean, you you know you gotta really you know you're twerking your body. You're 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 using oh, a lot of pumping her fist. Oh, she knows what's up. You would like at least sprain an ankle doing any of the things that she's doing. Oh, in this oh video. you got that right, man. Steve, I got some good news for you, buddy. What's that? The Hershey Company just announced a new addition to its Reese's product lineup. Now, we heard about Reese's Peanut Butter Cups with chips inside. Yes, that's good. They're going to do that for like a limited time. Yeah. Coming up soon. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, they're also going to release Reese's Big Cups with pretzels. (laughs) Which should have happened a long time ago. Thank you. I agree. Like, how did, did it take this long? You know, Steve, I think they've just been teasing you. I'm like, they, they, they probably thought, how long can we go? Well, because I like the Reese's Trail Mix thing that they have, which is not very healthy at all, but it's just basically <laughs> little mini, mini, mini peanut butter cups and then like pretzels in it as well. So oh, like, those are so good. Yeah, when I have those, I'm like, this is the most incredible combination, peanut butter, pretzels, and chocolate. We'll see if the big cup is even a better oh my combination. Gosh, I'm looking at this. And the big cup is just stuffed with the peanut butter, by the way. It's, there's not a lot of chocolate in that cup. As it should be. Whoa. Should be way more peanut butter than chocolate. Yeah, that's insanity. That really is insanity. And uh, you're going to try it, aren't you? I mean, yeah, it's a no brainer. They get my booty to the convenience store and buy this. <laughs> Hershey said that uh, in a press release, finally, a product that represents how we're all feeling in 2020. We're keeping it together on the outside, but we're salty on the inside. <laughs> Truth. It's actually very true. <laughs> that's actually really, really good. Uh, Reese's Big Cups with pretzels will be available next month in, uh, well, actually, November. We're still, oh, we're come still on. September. Stop teasing me. Yeah, sorry, buddy. Well, why wouldn't they make this available ready for Halloween? Or on the 3rd for my birthday. Oh, of course. Yeah, the 3rd's a better day. I'm sh- I don't know why they didn't think about that. Yeah, so, oh, 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 and Reese's Peanut Butter Cups with Pretzel Miniatures will be available in January. How are you going to fit pretzels in a miniature? Um, that's a really good question. You know what? Science. Okay, thanks. <laughs> they got people working. How on. small is a pretzel crumb going to be to fit in a, a miniature? Science! It reminds me of that M&M commercial where they're trying to fit the brownie into the M&Ms. I could just see you sitting at home trying to figure it out. I don't out. get it. <laughs> Does it go in? Yeah. 
Science I think Steve. I got it as small as possible, <laughs> yeah. and I still can't fit it in there. I'm not sure how they're going to get it done. But those Reese's people, let me just say, they're genius. They're geniuses. So he says, uh, Reese's peanut butter cups, you like those? Try the Butterfinger peanut butter cups. Butterfinger peanut butter cups? Now, does that mean Butterfinger makes their own brand, or has Hershey's got together with them? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't even know if they're the same company. They could be these days. I mean, everyone's mixed together. I think they're all owned by uh, the same people. Yeah. Well, there's Hershey's and there's M&M Mars. Those are the big guys. Oh, and Nestle. Is. And Nestle, I think, is involved in there somewhere. Nestle makes Butterfingers. Oh, so there we go. So Nestle has said, hey, Hershey's, we'll make our own peanut butter cup, throwing the butter finger in there. You know, I never realized that. I, I always just assumed Hershey's has got the rights to the term peanut butter cups. But it's not. That's not. They're, they don't have. Why am I even overthinking this? This is like great. This conversation. <laughs> like, here I am thinking, how are they legally able to call their thing the Butterfinger peanut butter cups? You know, that's a really good question, but things run out, Steve. You know what I mean? Like uh, trademarks and whatever. So I don't know. I mean, the peanut butter cups have been around for a long time. I didn't even know anybody else even tried to make a peanut butter cup. I thought everyone was just like, you know what? Bow down to the king. We're not even going to try Reese's. Yeah, but Butterfinger, of course, not a Hershey brand. They're like, we'll show you. Oh, I really want to try a Butterfinger peanut butter cup. I really do, too. I feel like it'd be good. All right. Well, taste test, right, guys? We got to get that done. Totally. All yeah. right, Vicky, you know your next job. Yep. You have till 10 a.m. Okay. Yeah, she can do it. I feel good about it. Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. Fissures, vents, and plugs are all associated with what geological feature? Water. No. Air. No. Yeah. Dirt. No. Oh, sorry, Steve. I didn't get this right either. I don't know why. It's pretty obvious. You're a smart person. Volcanoes. That's the word. You want a shot at beating Steve? You got it. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs at 647 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How do I know if bankruptcy is going to provide me with relief? What are the steps for my situation? Uh, there's so much information out there about bankruptcy with the Internet and uh, what people have heard from friends and, and other people that they've talked to about their financial issues or, or bankruptcy. Uh, there's there's also a lot of bad information out there or, or urban legends about bankruptcy. In order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you need to talk to an attorney that's experienced in bankruptcy. So in order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you should talk to an experienced bankruptcy attorney and right my job is not to convince you to file bankruptcy my job is to help you to, to make that decision and have all the facts uh, so that you can make an informed decision about whether bankruptcy makes sense for you what benefits it's going to have for you and what the downside of filing bankruptcy is thanks travis if you have more questions about bankruptcy you can reach out to travis anytime at choose the right chapter.com BECU is committed to helping you become financially fit. Meet Todd Peach, KISW's financial advisor. Have you considered renting a car to take that family trip versus using your own car? According to AAA, it costs 50 cents per mile to operate a car. If you are planning a long trip, renting may be the better option. If you do rent a car before you take your trip, check with your auto insurer and credit card issuer to see what coverage they provide. To get more financial advice from Todd, visit KISW.com slash BECU.